want? Justice. And when do we want him? Now. And tell me how we're going to take it. They're coming from dozens of states. We will be armed against our opposition. And we must make sense of self-defense. And we say to the city of Tulsa at this hour, we must make a way for the Black Power Convention right here on May 28th, May 29th, and May 30th. And these will make a history in the amendments, in our Second Amendment rights here. And when United States history will be made again, we will be freeing our people. We have a trillion dollar formula. In fact, this man has a $10 trillion formula for the actual freedom of black people. Once you have that freedom that goes again from the Allegheny Mountains to the Blue Ridge Mountains to Piedmont and all of those historical places that have been mentioned here, the so-called America, cut, cut, cut. But I'm telling you, we're gonna bring the promise of freedom home. And we will give, we do not need a permit to discriminate against us and our First Amendment rights to assemble and then protest against the open tyranny at this hour. We will come with our attorney and guide, Malik Zulu Shabazz. We will stand up for justice. And we intend to bring this about what? By any means necessary. We will bring freedom and an end to police brutality. How? By any means necessary. What do we want? Justice. And when do we want it? Now. And why are we going to bring it? By any means necessary. We thank you for joining us today. I will bring our beloved brother who has the original vision of this idea, and we're here to support his vision, his $10 trillion vision for the first freedom for black people in America. And we want you to be here on May 28th, May 29th, and the 30th, and there will be our Second Amendment rights to be armed against the vicious enemy of ours. We wish you black power and a strong black military. We will greet you, beloved brother and sister, in the greeting words of peace. Again, I am Sheikh Imam Akbar Abdullah Kareem, and I am the national spokesman for the new Black Panther Party for self-defense. Black, black power! Black power! Black power! Black power! Black power. alaikum. We bring to you our beloved brother. This is Nick Bezel, straight out of Austin for the Geronimo Pratt Gun Club. Assalamu alaikum and black power. Black, black, power. black power! Black power! Nick Bezel, Elmer Geronimo Pratt Gun Club. Again, I thank you all for coming out to hear the message today. The first thing I want to let you all know, we have the right to the First Amendment and the Second Amendment, just like every other citizen in this land. We will come here on the 28th, the 29th, and the 30th, and to show a strength and solidarity with the, the brothers and sisters here in Tulsa, Oklahoma. I want to lay down to you what will be taking place when we come. On the 28th, we will be having a panel here at the church, Vernon AME Church, where we'll be having discussions, open discussions about reparations. On Saturday, at the Hyatt Hotel, we will have continuous conversations about reparations, self-defense, and black empowerment. After that, we will have our armed march through the historic Greenwood District. Now, a lot of you have been asking questions about the permit when it comes to this maneuver. As of right now, the permit has not been granted by the city of Tulsa at this time. But what I am letting you know is, regardless of that permit, we will be coming to town, we will be having our convention, and we will be exercising our First and Second Amendment rights. Under the Constitution and under Oklahoma law, we have the right to open carry weapons, and we have the right to a First Amendment, our right to free speech, and nobody or no municipality is gonna impede on that. I'm giving the city of Tulsa until Friday to grant our permit. If they do not grant our permit by Friday, we will be seeing them in court next week. They will not impede on what we are trying to do and accomplish here, which is a sign of strength, solidarity, and unity amongst black people, not just here in Tulsa, but nationwide. So I'm laying that out for the city of Tulsa. I'm not mincing words, I'm letting them know. We have been more than flexible with the city. I've talked to them several times as recently as yesterday morning. If that permit is not granted, we will be taking the city of Tulsa to court next week. Now, on Sunday, we will be having a gathering where we have more speakers, where everybody from the community is welcome to come out. I say these things, why do I say it? This event is open to all black people from across the nation you will see a mass of black leaders that you haven't seen since the 60s come together. 
you will see black people come together in a way that you haven't seen since the 1960s. It's long overdue that our people come together and unify to push the black agenda forward. When you talk about reparations on the national level, you can't have a conversation of reparations without mentioning Tulsa, Oklahoma. Right, right. You can't have a conversation about black self-defense without mentioning Tulsa, Oklahoma. So why are we coming to Tulsa? Tulsa is the epicenter of everything that we're trying to do. Everything that we're fighting for for black people, Tulsa should be the plan. Tulsa should be the place, and we should all come together as people, discuss these ideas, discuss these options, help Tulsa get what they deserve. You look around, this was a thriving black community at one point. This place is gentrified now. Black people have been pushed out of what was historically theirs. This is sacred land to black people. And we're coming to let it know that we want this land back for our people. It's not a coincidence that Greenwood was 40 acres. It's not a coincidence. It's not a coincidence. We want our black people here in Tulsa to reclaim what belongs to them. That's right. And so when we come to town, we're telling all black Tulsans, meet with us. What do you want from us? What do you need from us? And we're going to give them everything they need to be successful in their fight for equity, and equity equals equality. And that's what we're coming here to do. There may be some people who say, oh, but these black guys are coming with guns. Get out of that mentality. Stop thinking every time you see a black person with a gun, something bad is going to happen. I can promise you, from May of last year to today, you've never seen an armed demonstration in America, whether it was Texas, whether it was Louisiana, Georgia, Florida, or Kentucky. There has never been an act of violence when you've seen black armed demonstrations in America. So what makes you think something's going to happen on our sacred land? It won't. But what you need to ask yourself is, why do you have people storming the U.S. Capitol causing havoc? That wasn't us. Take a look at those people and stop worrying about what we're doing. We're law-abiding citizens, and we care about our people. So you will see an armed maneuver here on the 29th in historic Greenwood District, Greenwood, Archer, and Pine. And I'm letting you all know today that we will be here regardless of what the city of Tulsa says. Just so you know, we have the right to open carry and we will do it. We have the right to walk on the sidewalks. We don't need a permit for that. So if they don't want to grant that permit, we'll take them to court. And if they want to fight us in court, and if they so happen to win, we'll still be here and we'll exercise our right on the right of ways, on the sidewalks. And I'm telling you now, there's no reason to be scared when you see armed black people. We need more self-defense. How many times do you turn on the news and you see black people lynched, being hung from trees today? The picture of this, this man down on the corner, Mercy, a hundred years ago in Tulsa with his hands up, talking about don't shoot. We're a hundred years later and people are still talking about hands up, don't shoot. How far have we come in a hundred years? How far have we come? I don't know, but we're getting ready to take it a lot further than where we are today. When we leave Tulsa, Everybody's going back to their respective places, and we're going to leave here with a plan, and we're going to be unified. Right. And I'm telling the people who don't want to get on board, we don't need them. Right. They can get left behind. But what you're going to see the weekend of Centennial is a unified front of black people that you've never seen before, that you've never seen, and it's just the beginning. So on May 29th, I expect to see all black Tulsans right standing with us in solidarity as we maneuver through this historic and sacred land. And you will see something that you've never seen before. That I can promise you. And with that, I'll take any questions. If the permit isn't passed, we'll be on the sidewalk. So how much threat can we be if we're on the sidewalk? We're pedestrians at that point. We're armed pedestrians, which is in our right. So if somebody deliberately tries to target us on the sidewalk, who's really in fear for their life at, at that point? Now we have the right to defend ourselves under the Constitution and the Second Amendment. So if we're on the sidewalk, there's no reason for them to come target us. 
And if the permit is granted and the police block off the streets, then it'll be blocked off. So there should be no reason for anybody to be in fear or try to use their, we their vehicle as a weapon. Because if they try to attack us, we will use our weapons to defend ourselves and the people that are around us. But you tell us a little bit about what, what the permit, what are you seeking? Trying to close down a couple of streets? Or, I mean, what is it? And have they given you any specific reason why they didn't want to grant that permit? So initially, when we first started this, this uh, these steps months back, the, the initial route was to come down Greenwood, go up Elgin, go over to Standpipe Hill, and then go up Martin Luther King, come down Pine, and then come back down Greenwood. They want, based on certain ordinances that they said they have in place, we would have had to cut it short and go along John Hope Franklin Boulevard because of how far the route is supposed to stretch. Then I get a call yesterday saying that that's not going to work. So then we decided that we would just take it all the way to King Street where Paradise uh, Baptist Church is at and we could go back to our initial starting point. So then they asked us, well, could we just take the sidewalk? Well, if we take the sidewalk, we don't need a permit at that point. So, and they keep trying to change the time. At first it was supposed to be 2.30, then 3.30, then 4. Now they're talking about maybe 6 o'clock. So everything the city has asked us to do, we've went back and readjusted the route. We've been more than flexible. We're not bending anymore. They're either going to issue the permit or they're not. And if they're not going to issue the permit, again, we're within our rights within the Constitution and within the state of Oklahoma to still come out here and exercise our First and Second Amendment rights. So if they don't want to, they don't want to give us the permit, the show is going to go on regardless. To be clear, that's the permit office, not the mayor. That's the permit office, correct. Look at what happened here 100 years ago. Obviously, they started flying planes, they started bombing Greenwood. But if they had a larger self-defense unit, they may not even been able to get to those planes. They may not have been able to use those planes. They would have been able to defend themselves even more. And all respects goes to the warriors who defended Greenwood. But what we're trying to tell you all is never again, this is the purpose of the guns, Never again will you come into a neighborhood, a black community, and massacre people the way that you did Greenwood, the way that you did Rosewood, even the Red Summer in Chicago, the way, do you all know that the, the Red Summer in Chicago, the leader, the lead antagonizer of the Red Summer ended up becoming the mayor of Chicago. This shows you how white supremacy works. You terrorize, you brutalize people, and then you become the mayor of the third largest city in America. Our weapons are for our own protection. Nobody else is going to protect us. So when you see these flyers with all these self-defense units, we're standing them up across the nation. Our plan when we leave here is to have a self-defense unit here in Tulsa to stand up. Right. Because so people need to, to be able... Never, never, ever again. When it's supposed to happen? Never, 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 never ever never again. again. Like power. Like power. This shouldn't happen. We should... The way America is supposed to be constructed we should be protected. We're not. We're not a protected class. Let me tell you something. Over the course of the last 12 months, we had so many different things happen in America. But when you go back, if you really dig deep and see, you will look at all these different groups and all these different categories that get special protections. The Native Americans in Oklahoma, they got special protections. The LGBTQ, they got special protections. The Asians just got special protections. But check the statistics. When hate crimes happen, who burdens that load the most? 50% of all hate crimes happen against black people in America. But we still don't have special protections. Why is that? Ask yourself, why don't we have these special protections? And so without these special protections, if we're not a protected class, what choice do we have but to defend ourselves? With the gun. That's what we have to do. Nobody else is going to protect us. We turn on the news every day. Our kids are getting murdered. Right. Our women are getting murdered. Our brothers are getting murdered. And our elders are getting abused. Right. We no longer, never again, can we allow what happened in our black communities to happen. We when have to take a stand. Never, never, ever again. Yeah. When? Never, never, never ever, ever again. again. Like power. Like power. Like power.
It's not about hate, not on our end. Again, I tell you, if you looked at any arm maneuver that has happened over the country within the last year, you've never seen any acts of violence from self-defense units. You've never seen it. You never see us as the antagonizers out attacking people. Right. It doesn't happen. So I don't know where this narrative comes from about hate. We're trying to get special protections from our people. Think about the civil rights movement. Our grandparents, our ancestors went and fought for equality for everyone. We're only asking for people to reciprocate that back to us. If everyone else is getting special protections, then it's okay for people to put a sign in their front yard that says Black Lives Matter. It's okay for people to wear a t-shirt that says Black Lives Matter. But when it really matters, when you're talking about your federal lawmakers, are you pressing your federal lawmakers for black people to have special protections? Are you doing everything you can to help us? I just told you, 50% of all hate crimes happen against black people. So what are we doing as a whole, as a nation, to make sure that black people are protected? Are you doing everything that you can? And if you're not, then what alternative do we have than to protect ourselves and stand up in self-defense? Right. 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 Well, when we come here, um, our plan is to come here and inject into the black economy, right? Which is a sign of unity. We're coming here, black businesses, which you know some of them may not be thriving at this time, but our plan when we come to town, unity, is to own, just to buy black. Obviously, um, our lodging. There's no black owned hotels. So obviously we can't do that. But black businesses, whatever's left down here, black business in North Tulsa, our plan is to come down here and buy these businesses out. Spend as much money as we can and to support the people here in Tulsa as much as we can. If they need laws passed, if we have people here that can help them do that, we will. If they need, whether it's on the, uh, the, the city level or the state level. It's my understanding that just two laws were just passed here in Tulsa that really go against civil rights. Right. So we want to sit down with the leaders here and work out a plan to help them get those laws overturned. So when we talk about unity, we're coming down here. This is not just people coming in from out of town. We have Tolson standing here with us. This is a sign of unity. We're just not from all the town. We have actual residents of Tulsa standing here with us. The pastor of the church is standing with us. So this is about unity. This isn't about hate. This is about us galvanizing our people and moving forward. I think I meant more specifically like, what about white folks or white people that may be here during that time? What's your message to them? To educate themselves, right? So if they're coming here, they're coming here for a reason. We all know that it's been 100 years since the race massacre. So if a white person is coming here and they're coming into this sacred land during this time, the best thing for them to do is educate themselves put their privilege to the side and understand what ha what happened here and then realize what's going on today and say how can we help black people become protected how can we help people black people move forward what can we do and a lot of times when we talk to white people who consider themselves allies the best thing they can do is when we have things uh, going through to become laws the best thing for them to do is to make sure that those laws get passed H.R. 40, the study for reparations, it's not even the payment of reparations. It's just the study of reparations. It's been sitting in D.C. stalled out for 30 years. So when you talk about unity, that's a, that's a clear example where you're asking about what can white people do and how can we be unified. Well, white people can go out here and push their lawmakers to say move on with the H.R. 40 study so we can see exactly what needs to be paid out and then move forward with that. So unless they're going to do these things that actually deliver tangibles to black people, you can't consider yourself unifying with black people unless you're guaranteeing tangible items for black people here in America. Good teacher. Good teacher. Anybody else? Any other questions? Go ahead.
You want to answer that? Okay, I, I, yes, sir. Uh, our, our message to black America, again, I'm a shaky man, Mark Bar, national spokesman, New Black Panther Party Self-Defense, and our message to black America is for you to join us and get your first taste of real freedom in America. From the time of Nat Turner, from the time of Dr. Frederick Douglass, from the time of Marcus Messiah Garvey, the noble Drew Ali, the most honorable Elijah Muhammad, from Malcolm and Martin, they never declared the film, and they never was a fulfillment of the prophecy of freedom. And we said, when you join this network, you will latch on to your first taste of freedom in America. Black power? Black power. Yes, ma'am. Well, well, well let, us, uh, let us explore this in the realm of spirituality. I've been a chaplain for 50 years, and I've, I've been a chaplain to Jehovah's Witness, to Baptist, to Presbyterian, African Methodist, Methodist Episcopalian, Protestant, Catholics, uh, Sunni Muslims, Nation of Islam Muslims, uh, Ahmadiyya Muslims, uh, uh, <laughs> every form of religion I've had an opportunity to counsel with. But we must learn the sequential order of how do you get to forgiveness. And the judge will tell you from the bench there has to be some sign of remorse in there, some attribute of remorse. Now, do you bear witness of anyone being remorseful since 1921? Has there been, been public or any full-scale remorse? There's another step in the road that may be called repentance. You got that, uh, Channel 6, you got that clear? Repentance, and have you seen anybody? Can anyone here bear witness to any real form of repentance from uh, what well, you call it from Woodrow Wilson to Donald the Duck Trump, or some call him 45. But in 46, uh, you, you remember the story of Jesse James and, and Frank James, and the thing about this black boat that you see, Jesse James will come to town and he'll rob you for your goods, is that right? And that came in the, fir in the form of James Clyburn. And then later, about a couple of days, Frank James will come to town, and he'll come to town drunk. And then somebody will challenge him to a gunfight, and Frank James will shoot him dead, and they'll make him the sheriff. You were always rooting for Frank and Jesse James, Bonnie and Clyde, and some of these kind of folks. But on that strength, see, in the form of Barack Hussein Obama and James Clyburn delivered all those black votes to directly to Joe Biden. Is that right or wrong? Right. And then there were no conditions, there was no negotiation. The first thing he came out with, Channel 6 know what I'm talking about, he had 600, right? Hispanics that had no mom and dad in them, is that right? So Biden jumped right on that. That was the LGBT move, right? And Joe Biden jumped right on that. And he said, oh, I left out the so-called American Negro vote. Huh? And he appointed the chief of the army, is that right? So have we tarried 100, 200 years here and getting denied the vote and fight for a Voters Rights Act to get what? In some form of tyranny and corruption. Now, to say just to get us a, a a, a captain in the army? Is that any different than Bush appointing, taking your sister, Anita, ba uh, uh, what is her name? Anita Hill, to make him a Clarence Thomas? They will sacrifice 10 Anita Hills to get one Clarence Thomas. So is there any difference between Clarence Thomas appointment and the Joe Biden appointment to the army? So we have to understand the tricks that have been played in politics, huh? I'm right in Washington, D.C., where I've monitored, monitored every president from Eisenhower and Truman Eisenhower on in the Woodrow Wilson, on and I'm nearly 70 years old, all of them, Kennedy, all of them, from Johnson coming in behind him, huh? from a Gerald Galaxy Ford on into well, the Nixon impeachments and the partial and almost complete impeachments of Donald Trump, one, two, three times, you still couldn't get rid of him, and he came back. Mitch McConnell and Leslie Graham and all of those are chiming in to say he was corrupt. They took put five body bags at the state capitol with no answer, huh? And want to say, what, ignore your lying eyes, is that right? But we saw them punk those police departments. They didn't care about a balanced budget. They didn't come in to get any inalienable rights. They didn't give a damn about thou shall not kill. They put down five body bags. And if there had been black people, a thousand black people would have produced at least 500 body bags. You know what I'm talking about. Black power? Black power. Black power. Black power. Black power. So you know what I'm talking about. So good, we stand toe-to-toe -to, -toe to tell you that there has been no 
real freedom for black people from Truman, Truman Eisenhower to Joe Biden. So now it's you and Camilla Harris toe to toe. That partial conviction of those guys that have, uh, did the atrocities in Minneapolis, and I was live for it. I'm saying that those prosecutors have now begun to go to work and prosecute those uh, that were standing around that did nothing. That's a derelict in duty to watch a man die and do nothing, and you on duty. So you have not come to save God and protect black people, but they have come for the annihilation of black people, the execution of the black man, woman, and child. And when you hear them yell, I quit, meaning that they have been paid in full or they have a million dollar extra account because the chief of Washington, D.C. ran out and say, I quit after the execution of a young man. The chief in Minneapolis ran out and say, I quit. Darren Wilson ran away and say, I quit because it's a sign that they're being paid in full. We mark today are into tyranny and corruption and the first freedom in America. And that's the message to black people is the first freedom. Black power? Black power. Black power. Black power. Black power. And a strong black military to black the goddamn call. Assalamu alaikum and black power. Oh yeah, my beloved sister, let her say that the Queen Mother did welcome us here. Give her that, that 33 and 30 seconds to say welcome from Queen Mother Day. Good evening, good afternoon. I am Pamela Smith. I was crowned the Queen Mother of the State of Oklahoma, the Black Power, a Black Panther, excuse me. I want to say today to all the press here, welcome our brothers and sisters around the world to Tulsa, Oklahoma. Our city is hurting. Our city has been hurting for many years, and it's time for our big brothers and sisters to come and show unity and hope for us. Our people in our city has been paralyzed. They have been paralyzed, and so if we got a gleam of hope coming to Tulsa, Oklahoma, to stand for us, I welcome them to our mayor, to our governor. If you're going to ever continually to stand and show unity, you all have to demonstrate from the top down. Give the people the permit and let them come to this city. The Klansmen come here and they don't have permits. Teach. The Klansmen show up downtown with their guns or whoever they are, and y'all don't ask them for permits. Stop trying to paralyze us black people. Stop that. You can't control history. It is what it is. So I say today to all of my people in Tulsa, Oklahoma, come out and support the brothers that's coming across the states to support us. We've been sitting in this little uh, paralyzed uh, situation for years. We act like we sleepwalking. And we got some brothers and sisters that's coming to say, we want to help y'all. We want to put a, a plan in place to be able to teach y'all how to be self-sufficient. What was taken from us is not our fault. We only want what's right. We want reparation. We want everything that was stolen from us. Right. I do believe the word say everything the devil stole, God going to give it all back to you 100 fold. And my brothers are here today and they coming. And I'm the queen mother of the state of Oklahoma. I welcome them to Taurus, Oklahoma. They have been here several times for Miss Pamela Smith and they came peaceful. Every time they see a black man with a gun, they always got to think we violent. We not violent. It's not us killing all our black brothers and sisters. It's the white man shooting our brothers and sisters. So isn't that script a little twisting right there? So give these brothers they permit in this city, Mayor, Mayor Bynum and J. Uh, J. Kevin Stitz, whoever's holding up to permit, give it to the brothers. They come in here peaceful. Don't try to hold them back. That's what's been the problem for black people, is that y'all have tried to hold us back for years and years and years, and it's time. It's time. Don't do this to us, please. If this is a time to give a little young brother and a young girl hope to see the Black Panthers coming to give them some strength, these men are good men. They come and stood with a woman named Pamela Smith. I didn't even know this panther. He came all the way from Washington, D.C. to come stand with a wounded sister because a white man decided to rape me and abuse me with a glass salt shaker, torture me. And these panthers came and stood with me. So don't rob them of what they come to do to help black people to stand up and be self-sufficient. Black power. Black power. Black power. Our beloved brother, Nick Bezel. Assalamu alaikum, black power. So. Nobody, you got a question? Go ahead, brother. So the question is, is that if the city decides not to issue this permit, right. if the city denies the permit, uh -huh. number one, will they kill Yes. And number 
Right. So, based on the laws, right, we're speaking, speaking from a legal aspect now, we have the right to utilize the sidewalks. We also understand, based on Oklahoma law, we had a right to open carry. Now, most of us come from states that we have already have our gun permits and we can carry anyway. So most of us, obviously, is an armed demonstration. So we will utilize the sidewalks. If there's part of the streets that's blocked off or we're forced to use the streets, it'll be blocked off to vehicular traffic anyway. So we will be able to take the streets at those points. But anywhere that's not blocked off, we'll utilize the sidewalk. So we don't need a permit to use the sidewalk. So it will still take place regardless. And I also want to make something else clear to you. Yes, this is being advertised as the armed formation, an armed maneuver. But what I also want you to understand is everyone is welcome to participate, armed and unarmed. So even if you don't have a firearm, but you want to come stand with this word keeps coming up, right? Unity. So if you still want to come and stand in unity with us, you can. You don't necessarily have to be armed to do so. This is open to all, all black Tulsa's. All people can come out here. Correct. If something should happen and law enforcement tries to prevent you from doing this or someone tries to prevent you from doing this, is there a plan that's set in place in order to address that issue and be able to work through that? Has that been planned out? Well, first, if he does that, he's, he just committed a federal crime. Um, most of us have body cams, so we will be able to have the uh, interaction. And a, there are several people in our formation that are actual lawyers. See, what a lot of people don't understand is a lot of people in our formations are professional people. We have doctors, um, lawyers, uh, I mean, anything, soldier, anything you can think of under the spectrum, we have them in our formations. So there's no way that someone will be able to come in, impede on our maneuver, and think that they'll be able to, to violate our constitutional rights. So, yeah, there's a plan in place. We'll get the information, and then we'll take them to court. Like, there's, there's nothing, like... And I don't know if you were, if that was a bait question or anything. Okay, I'm just clarifying because some people will try that and ask, "Oh, if somebody does this," because they're thinking that there'll be some act of violence. Again, I keep telling you all over and over again. Over the course of the past year, you've never seen a black demonstration, a black arm maneuver where violence has occurred. You didn't see it. You didn't see it in Louisville. You didn't see it in Georgia down in Stone Mountain. You didn't see it in Florida. We conducted four maneuvers in Texas. You didn't see it there. So there's no way that you'll be able to see it in this, this formation as well. So I keep trying to tell everyone, this isn't, this isn't violence. This is a sign of strength. This is a sign of solidarity. That's what we're doing here. And we're unifying with the people here. It just happened to be that this was the centennial and this is where we did it at. That's right. Anybody else? Any other questions? Any other questions? No, I'll just a quick one, Nick. It's not just about a mark.